Every school serves lunch, but not every school's canteen is like the Menorah Grammars. This canteen is run by special needs pupils. For the last eight years, the school has had a special needs department, the Dachai Noam Centre. As part of an innovative scheme, many of the centre's pupils are working in the school's canteen, the Delhi. These are children who fall between two stools, so to speak. They're not really able to manage a mainstream education by themselves. On the other hand, they're not children who should be in special schools. So how does this approach work, and how did it begin? Rabbi Michael Zimmer looked to a disused kitchen on the site for answers. Rabbi Zimmer, who's the head of the unit, came to me and suggested that he have the kitchen made kosher, made suitable for Jewish dietary religious requirements, and that he set up a deli and an MVQ. I, I thought that the entire idea was quite insane and totally impractical. In principle, however, I take the view that if somebody makes a proposal and you can make space for it, that's probably a sensible thing to do. So I told him to go ahead if he wanted, and uh, so he did. It was hard work, but using what was there, not impossible. This particular kitchen was derelict virtually, and we had to revamp it all. We haven't had any new, hardly any new equipment, and what equipment we had that was new was reconditioned but we've had to just clean it and get it ready, operational, which took uh, quite some time. With the kitchen refurbished and some support from local chefs, Rabbi Zimmer was able to set up an NVQ in catering for the students, giving them the chance to get some hands-on experience and work towards useful qualifications. So what's the two types of main fish that we have? Place and oily. Flat and round. Flat and oily. round. Round. OK, over here, this is flat fish, yeah? Yeah. So what we're looking for when we get fresh fish, OK? Look for the spine and that the eyes are red. The NVQ in, in regards to perhaps the alternative of, of a GCSE is the fact that it's, it's um, involved and it's, it's practical. As well, this requirement is that they have real work experience, which is not so for the GCSEs. Follow it down. You can feel the bone, yeah? You can feel the meat. We, we teach them theory, and we teach them the hygiene and the um, use of equipment, and then we teach them practically. We show them what to do and then encourage them to do it themselves. They get usually get an MVQ uh, level one or level two. They're holding the tail, working the knife backwards and forwards, like, like, the skin. Yeah. like the violin, yeah? The reason why the daddy is important is because it like, gives you a bit of more practical, more positive way of life than just learning in school and every day thinking that you have to get up and go to school. When I've got actually something to look forward to, I get up in the morning and I say I'm looking forward to the daddy. It cooks now, you can tell by the colour. It's easy for the students to see how their work is progressing. Go on, try one. Eat, eat one. All right. break, break it open. And you can see what the raw, the raw texture was to the cooked texture. You see the difference? Yeah. They nice? Mm. So you did that when you filleted the fish, remember? They're excellent. Nice? They so ourselves. Very excellent, eh? <laughs> the kitchen plays a greater role than your average classroom. We provide a service for the school here, and the deli's open um, for lunch times only, uh, and the boys prepare and serve on a daily basis. Pizza's on the menu today. I'm going to um, weigh it, and then I'm going to flatten it out on that flattening machine behind you, and then we're going to, and it's going to go, um, and then we're going to put the sauce. First, going to make holes in it, and we're going to put the sauce on. And the cheese, and we're going to bake it in the oven. The canteen is always a focus in school. Placing boys from the special needs department at the heart of this has had huge benefits. The Delhi has enabled some of our boys for the very first time to be in a situation where the mainstream boys are, want to be in their shoes as opposed to them being on the outside looking in at the mainstream boys. They're working their very high profile jobs and they're doing extremely successful. It looks like it's good fun, quote unquote and the mainstream boys sort of 
see them succeed, it boosts their confidence and it, gives, it enables them to be accepted also on an on a equal footing. There's maybe a learning thing for the, for the mainstream boys to see that not always special needs boys have a major problem, just a little problem what they have. So I like I have I have there's a reading problem and dyslexic, so but it doesn't make me uh, unuseless. One of the greatest successes of the Delhi has been a process of reverse inclusion. Students from the mainstream have taken up roles working alongside boys from the special needs department. We've gotten a lot of people from a lot of different disciplines, perhaps even levels of functioning. Um, who work together, work cohesively in order to ensure success. So this gives, opens up to them opportunities which, for interaction which might not have happened naturally. So uh, this is only to be, uh, you know, something that can only be, can only be good, only good can come from, from it. These boys are often sort of Subconsciously, you feel at the side of things, but over here they're right, right at the center. So uh, it's also to their advantage, and you see their confidence boost as they interact with the mainstream peers. These are individuals, perhaps, who would appear as socially isolated, insecure, um, not quite knowing how to interact within a mainstream type of environment and today they're fully functioning and equipped with the skills to mingle and to be part of a, of, of a peer group without standing out as being different. Pupils from the special needs department don't only work in the Delhi. Their timetables are organized according to their needs and the remainder of their time is split between mainstream classes and special needs lessons. The work they're involved in in the Delhi is believed to have a positive effect on the whole of their education. It actually bridges over with them wanting to learn math. Math becomes relevant in terms of budgeting, um, dealing with the counter, and as well as English, communication. These are all skills which they then see meaningful. Aspects of science become real, become alive and therefore I think it brings a lot of disciplines, both on a vocational, practical, as well as academic um, study in, in, into, into action. Yitzhak was struggling in math, but his achievement in the practical environment of the Delhi has helped his academic work. This one was 462, and I'm supposed to be doing 550. Just adding a bit, because it wasn't exactly 550. I had one student who came from um, his previous experiences of failure in, in, other, in other schools and it, he was not open to, to even try because he had realised that when you try you, you fail and it was only after that he experienced the success of, of working in the Delhi that he was, confidence was boosted and he was prepared to try in other areas and he found that not only in the Delhi could he succeed but in the classroom also he could succeed. You can see that you've got to know as a worker how your customers are feeling. I didn't deal I with it right. Here, here as well, because then you're like, Rachel Hannison, an English and life skills teacher, is taking a group of students who work in the deli. They're working on role play based on situations they might be involved in in the catering industry. I am furious with you. I asked you for soup. You gave me soup, fine. It's boiling hot. I burnt my tongue with it. It's way too hot. I hear you, so um, uh, I think I'll make it my business to see that the soup is served at the correct temperature. You made it sound like you were really sorry for what happened. You didn't say, I agree with you, the soup was boiling hot. You just said, I'll make sure the soup's the right temperature next time. Yeah. Absolutely right. They really enjoy it because it's practical, it's relevant to them. Okay. By doing the deli, it makes it real. So it's not a play situation or a role play situation, it's actually happening and they can see that the skills that they, they're learning in here are then reflected back over there and then back to here again, which they will then use in their jobs hopefully in later life. It's a very, very unique and special uh, atmosphere here. The boys are able to be integrated into a mainstream school, yet still have their needs catered to at their own level, which makes it very exciting, sometimes very challenging, but it's a very special place.
Once a week, a group of students studying the MVQ travel to a nearby kosher catering company, where they work with Hassan, learning about the preparation of meat. So what we're going to do first is take the legs off, legs off the chicken. I tend to simplify everything and break it down methodically rather than go in at the deep end and try something too clever for them. If you'll watch around here, yeah? Go around here. Let's do one chicken. I'll try to pair them off to the abilities that they, they have. Uh, if you've got a couple of quiet ones together, you've got a uh, slow-mo, you've got a couple of other two that I try and blend in with slow-mo to keep slow-mo on his toes, you know? And that's, you know, generally keeping them focused to exactly what they're doing. So what we do, one minute, one minute, slow-mo. Just watch to start with. I try not to give uh, anybody a, a mundane job. Uh, if there is any mundane jobs, everybody does it as a team. What we're going to do now is flour, egg and breadcrumb. So you've got to have the discipline and what you, what you want to achieve. You've got to aim for that. And at the same time, they are children and you are in the kitchen. You've got a lot of hazards around you, so you have to be aware you know, the potential hazards and... Come on, let's think about what we're doing. You can't tell them off, you can praise them, show them what the right way is, and just tell them this, this is not good, you know, without upsetting them. Oh, <laughs> there'll be no vegetables yeah. left, I think. Yes. They're, they're achieving okay, their goal, they're, they're achieving taste, they're achieving new things. Like today, I, I did a chow mein, and, and it was new. So they're all focusing on something new, and they all had a little go of... Um, with the pan, giving it a little toss in the pan. I lost half the veg, but <laughs> they all let to have a go. And it just gives them a little inspiration, you know, to achieve the, the chow mein. And at the end, when they ate it, oh, you know, and I get my feedback, they like it. <laughs> it has so many benefits for the individuals that are given the opportunity to do an NVQ, to work in a kitchen, to develop life skills, to get a qualification potentially for employment. It's, it's very worth it and to get actually the whole school involved, it becomes a very exciting program. The fact that they've got now vocational training is, uh, and a qualification means that they now have a, a, a potential, at least even if they don't end up following that, but at least it's given them a a goal, a starting point, with, with uh, real prospects in the, f in the future. My parents are very happy that I'm cooking. My mother is extremely happy that I'm the only child in the family that's followed her cooking. And they want, they want me to continue and to, um, hopefully become a, a proper chef. We're running the vocational deli and catering course because we believe it's good for those pupils. They feel fulfilled with it and they can see that they are doing something useful and valuable which the rest of the school derives benefit from. And apart from any use they may make later on, and apart from their being usefully and valuably occupied during their day, it gives them purpose and it, it has value, I think, from that perspective. Okay, you see this? Okay, try now. I'm extremely proud of what's happened in the unit and I'm extremely proud of the boys because I've seen them grow. I mean, I've and a personal level, I've been involved with some of these boys from a very young age. And to see them outstretch even what the experts suggested would be able to achieve. And to see them realize their success is a very tremendous, satisfying feeling.